Hello and welcome to the Smart Women of Business vlog and podcast. I'm your host, Jay Mackay from Jay Mackay Communications, marketing consultant and coach who works with people across the world to build the business of their dreams. Today, I'm talking to Marlene Schmidt. Marlene is an expert money management coach and certified spending planner who works in who wants to live in a world where financial stress and overwhelm is the exception rather than the rule. Marlene specializes in helping female service-based entrepreneurs to manage their personal and business finances, align their spending with their values and priorities, and grow profitable and sustainable businesses that support their chosen lifestyle so that they can experience clarity, security, confidence, and freedom from financial stress. Marlene supports her clients reduce their time they spend thinking about money, enabling them to focus on growing their business and living their best life. Marlene works with online with clients worldwide, offering a range of services from single sessions on specific areas to her VIP spending planner coaching program. Marlene is passionate about empowering women to become financially independent because she believes that wealthy women can change the world for the better. And that is so right after the story that's come out about the Canva founders this week, yes. Marlene. Welcome yes. to the show. Thank you, Jane. Thank you so much for having me. It's a real pleasure to be here. So tell me about your business journey so far, Marlene, and how you got to where you are today. Okay. Well, I had a long career in corporate and government positions, um, working on things like business systems improvement, uh, coaching, developing and delivering training programs to hundreds of staff. Um, and I ended up finally um, as a HR manager. And I loved my work. I really did. And I had no, I guess, no desire to go into business for myself. But there were a number of things that really frustrated me about working for big organisations. And that was that I felt that I wasn't recognised for my value in the organisation. I was tired of actually trading my time for money. Mm. Um, and the goalposts were forever shifting as well. And I was also forced at times to act um, in or out of alignment with my personal values oh, because a it's a one. fine line in HR between working for the benefit of the organisation and balancing that with looking after the employee. So come 2015, um, my position as a HR manager in the local government here was made redundant. And around the same time, both of my parents fell terminally ill. Oh, I'm so sorry. Yeah, so it was a bit tough. So I, initially I focused on my family, my parents, um, and then um, they both passed within six months of each other. So then I, I did a lot of soul searching and thought, you know, what do I do now? Um, I was 58, um, but I, I wasn't ready to retire. You know, I thought I've got more to, to give um, where I can add value. So I had a look at, at my skills and, and what I could do. And then I had a bit of an epiphany um, because probably almost, almost 20 years prior to that, um, I was in not a good place financially or we weren't the family. I managed the family finances. My husband sort of yeah, trusted so me I. with it, you know, yeah. leave it up to me, just complain when things go wrong. Um, <laughs> And my husband at that time was working in a business that was seasonal in nature. So we had, you know, very high income in the summer, virtually none in the winter. We had a lot of credit card debt. Um, we had two teenage kids. We never seemed to be able to take a family holiday. Um, and I was really struggling with traditional budgeting methods to, to manage the family finances and when that happens, we, we tend to think it's our fault. Mm. Um, but I've come to realise that it's not, it's not an individual's fault, it's that the system doesn't work. Traditional budgeting, in my view, doesn't work. So I thought there's got to be a better way. So I went 
searching for a solution and I discovered spending plans and some very powerful software that basically does all the calculation for you. And it, it was life changing for us. Um, within a few years, we'd um, eliminated our credit card debt. We had um, plans in place for our retirement. Um, we were paying all our bills on time. We built our savings. And subsequent to that, we, we paid out our home mortgage. Um, and I, I don't think it's a coincidence that, you know, I was probably in my mid-30s at that time. And I think that's a critical time of life. It's when all the pressures come on us, you know. If we haven't got a home already, you know, we likely want to have one. Um, we have the pressures of all the, the costs associated with children and their sport and their education you know they are expensive everything. critters those kids yeah, yeah they are. <laughs> um so you know I had felt that it was always one step forward two steps back and when I discovered this new way of managing my money it just changed everything and so I had a bit of an epiphany I thought well I can do this I can teach other people so at the same time, I think the stars aligned or whatever they say, um, the founder of the Spending Planners Institute and the creator of this software program reached out to me as a long-term user of the software and said, would I be interested in uh, training as a spending planner and getting my certification? And um, I said, yes, this is it. This is what I want to do. Um, and so the rest of it is history, really. I, uh, I then started my business and um, haven't really looked back. It's really most, the most fulfilling work I've ever done. And I often think to myself, oh, I wish I'd done it sooner. But then, you know, you don't bring the same level of experience to it. You know, if I'd started it earlier, mm. um, I wouldn't have, you know, the same depth of experience that, that I have now um, because I can honestly say that I've been where most of my clients are um, and there is a way forward, you know, and mm. it's never too late. So um, and I think there's a huge gap in the market for services such as mine because at one end of the spectrum we have financial counsellors and so you know, people who are in really mm. serious financial distress, um, they, you know, they go to a counsellor. At the other end, we have financial planners and, you know, they look after investments, wealth creation, insurance, you know, estate planning. But there's, there wasn't a great deal of help available for the vast majority of people that fall in the middle of that. You know, yeah. they're not facing bankruptcy. And they haven't got thousands of dollars to invest. They just need to get on top of their finances day to day and, you know, have a plan in place and be moving forward. And that, that's the work I do, um, yeah. you know, looking after those sorts of people. Yeah. Just everyday Australians that just want to take yes. control of their money. Yeah. And I think... Exactly. Um, so my next question is always, how has your business evolved over the last few years and what were the signs for you, for you that it was time to change? And I'd be interested in whether things like the barefoot investors come around and everyone suddenly having date nights and, and actually brought finances to the forefront of our thinking that it is something we can control. So how, how have you changed your business in the last few years and what were the signs for you to change? Because our businesses are constantly evolving. They are, they are. Um, initially, I started out working locally. Um, and Harvey Bay is not a huge population. You know, there's only, well, now there's probably around 100,000 in there. Oh, that is big compared area. to where I live. <laughs> That's more than double the population of my entire LGA. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, so. Um, but coupled with that, the demographic here, is um, either people who are on social security benefits and, you know, just getting by um, or wealthy retirees who have, you know, moved here from places like Victoria and New South Wales for the climate. And, and so 
I was struggling to find clients. Mm. So I decided I was going online. <laughs> and online, boy, they said it'll be great, they said. <laughs> yeah, and what a learning curve that turned out to be because I, I wasn't active on Facebook, um, uh, you know, Instagram, forget it. Um, and so I did a whole lot of learning, um, you know, got a business mentor and got to the point where I actually had had a business um, online, which was really great. But I think as we all do, in the beginning I started out, oh, I can help everybody. Yes. And I can. But. <laughs> do you want to? <laughs> when I was trying to speak to everyone, I was actually, I think, speaking to no one. It was, it was too generic. Yeah, yeah. So finally, after much time, I think it was only probably in the last... 18 months I've really niched down and that's where I, I, I now service um, women entrepreneurs um, and even in saying that it's not all women entrepreneurs um, you know you have to be I guess ready to do the work mm. um, otherwise you know any any knowledge is not going to stick um, so it's, it's people who are passionate about what they do, but they mm. also recognise that they're at the stage of business where they actually do need to get a handle on their finances if they're going to scale up. Because we often, we always think of systems in terms of scaling, but we don't often consider the financial systems. We always go, exactly. oh, I've got to have a funnel, I've got to have this, I've got to have that. It's like, well, actually, can you can you do that can you keep the cash flow because cash flow is so important in business oh well that's my big thing <laughs> <laughs> um, because you know you can have you can have a profitable business a business that shows a profit over the full mm -hmm. year and still run out of money yeah at a particular point in time because expenses go up and down and income oh boy it goes up and down too. Yeah. And um, if you have a month where, you know, a low income month that just happens to coincide with a high expense month, you can be in real trouble. And so that's where the work I do, it's really essentially a cash flow management system um, as well as a, a financial plan, I guess you'd say. Um, so, yeah, and your finances aren't given, I don't think, the priority that they should be. Um, mm. in for women in business or anyone in business really and sadly a lot of people sacrifice their personal financial security because they're so passionate about their business and so they're pumping money into the business sometimes in the in the early stages um, and putting their own financial security at risk in the mm. process so yeah, I'm about educating people that, you know, it is really important and it, it's not boring and it can be fun. It's actually <laughs> fun. <laughs> it's funny because um, all the because people I talk you... about on, on the podcast this month have been like, finances is a really fun thing. And I'm like, okay. <laughs> yeah, it's, I guess the doing part of it um, needs to be easy you know, because a lot of people come in with the attitude, you know, that this is going to be boring. And yeah. um, so, you know, I'm, I'm glad that the system I use makes it easy, the mm. processing side of it. But the information it gives you is what makes it fun because yeah. when you have control over where all your, your money's going and you know exactly where you stand every single day, it actually helps you make better decisions in your business absolutely so you you know when you can spend and when you can't you know when you need to bring in more clients um, you know when you're ready to outsource and you can predict how that's going to affect your your cash flow mm. um, so it's it's really empowering um, and so yeah I, I like I think it's fun well as long as you do Marley, um, that's the main thing I'm, and I'm not a numbers person. This is the other um, myth that we have to bust. My husband finds it really amusing 
um, because he doesn't totally understand what I do, obviously. <laughs> um, but he thinks, oh, you're not good with maths and you're a money coach, ha, 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 you know, but you don't need to be. That's why we have software. <laughs> um, More about strategy and, and, and data and like, analysis, I suppose. Yeah, and it's about consciousness too around our spending um, and our commitments and also about, I guess, being really clear about what we want, what our goals are, you know, and, and breaking those down into logical, you know, small steps that we can take to get there. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that's fantastic. Um, so... Yeah. How do you manage your life as an entrepreneur? So what do you do in your everyday like? Yeah. Um, well, I'm one of these people. I'm an introvert. So, you know, I can sit at the computer all day long and, you know, my husband can come and say, come on, that's enough. So I've had to be really firm with boundaries around my work. So I limit myself to five to six hours a day um, and then I, I down tools and I do something that I enjoy or you know, go out for a walk, whatever it is. Um, and I, I've blocked out my calendar as well so I don't have clients in the afternoons, um, although I will meet with clients out of hours if you know, that's all they can manage. Um, and I... I do plan my days in that I pick, because everyone has an endless to-do list. Yes, um, it will never be done. <laughs> no. So I just pick the three most important tasks that will move my business forward and I concentrate on those. And if I get those done, I've had a, I've had a good day. Um, and I have a bit of a morning routine that I try to do every day. So I do some gratitude journaling. Um, of course, I, I choose my three main tasks. Um, meditation or a, a hypnosis and some exercise. So, yeah, that's pretty much how I manage my day. That's yeah. a great way to set up a day. That's how I, I do my journaling and my meditation. My, my exercise is in the afternoon, but it sets you up for calm, aligned intention like that's my sort of goals yeah it's amazing what a difference it makes mm. mentally yeah, your mindset especially yeah yeah 100 yeah. 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 i agree and if you're not meditating people you need to get on it so yes. <laughs> <laughs> what tools do you use in your business um to help you your productivity yeah um obviously the spending planner software is obviously. number one obviously <laughs> Um, what else do I use? Uh, I use Acuity um, for my client bookings. Um, I use Canva. I love Canva. I love Canva. I could get carried away on Canva, so I have to be careful. <laughs> um, I use MailChimp for my email list and Zoom, obviously. Obviously. <laughs> yes. At the moment, oh, I've got one local client at the moment, but the majority of my clients, you know, we yeah. meet over Zoom and it's it's fabulous. Wow. Um, Amazing. Yeah. Um, what else? And I guess in terms of tools, um, you know, the mindset work is really important. Mm. So, you know, I do a bit of EFT tapping on occasion. Um, yeah, the hypnotherapy tracks that I listen to and the meditation. Um, uh, I, I've been thinking about um, getting something like Asana or Trello, um, but I haven't taken the leap yet. I haven't decided which, which is better. Yeah, it's like Asana, Trello, Airtable or ClickUp. Yeah, and ClickUp at, was the other one. Yeah. I look at them and I go, will that just become another thing to do in my day? I know. I procrastinate on. So I'm, I'm in the I'm same. I'm the of, same. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. yeah. so, I sort of, 
you know, I've got my client management system that I've set up myself and it's working and I think, oh, I don't know, it might be just overkill. To go Am I just going to complicate my life even more? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and that, I guess that's something that I sort of say to people starting out in business, you know, don't go and spend a whole lot of money on all these things that you don't actually need. Yeah, um, yeah. yeah. I've, I've followed gurus that go, from the beginning you need like, entreport and all these really big systems it's like yeah. no no they're very expensive um That's just right. go to mailchimp it's free use gmail you know get yeah. your own domain but use gmail like use all the free things yeah Boot and you actually it. don't even need a website i didn't have a website at the very beginning no um, as long as you've got a, um the booking tool yeah and you've got facebook and mm, instagram, instagram. And you can set up a connection. set up a website now in canva yeah. And host on camera. It's amazing. Anyway, it is. put myself out of a job. So one of the things that I always talk about and that affects every entrepreneur I know except one. Um, what are your methods to overcome like bad days, imposter syndrome? Because we all have bad days in business, even yeah. though we don't see them on Instagram. Yeah, that's true. That's true. <laughs> um I guess. I don't know that I suffered from or suffer from imposter syndrome, but I suffer with promoting myself. You know, I grew up in a family where it was, you know, self-praise is no recommendation, my mother always used to say. Um, so I've struggled with visibility and with, I guess, claiming my power and the power mm. of, of the transformation that I can facilitate. Um, so when I'm having a bad day, um, I generally remind myself of who I'm doing it for, you know, and, and get a picture in my mind of my ideal client who's struggling and, you know, that usually does the trick for me. Um, and also go, going and reading client testimonials. Oh, yeah. um, I have I've a folder. Yeah, yeah, me too. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, that's oh yeah, I, I am good. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. look at me go. Yeah, um, and and just I guess listening to my own, I guess natural cycles and of when I'm product best, you know, productively, yeah. um, and listening to my body. So you know, if I need rest, you know, I take it. Um, you know, it's part of, I guess it's one of the advantages we have yeah. in working for ourselves that we can design our business around our own biorhythms and, and life cycle. And in terms of frustrations and things like that, I usually walk away, go and get outside in the sunshine or go for a walk on the beach and, you know, you come back with a totally different attitude absolutely yeah. I love it and I'm I'm the same I'm like one advantage of working for myself is that I can nap whenever I want and yeah. ever since I gave myself permission to do that <laughs> I haven't had a nap oh <laughs> I no just, I just power on through and I'm like oh okay I'll meditate instead of napping now though yeah. if in doubt like if you're cranky meditate if you're tired meditate you know <laughs> so how do you maintain your sense of community while working alone and and in isolation yeah, I, I guess I probably don't struggle the same as a lot of other people because I'm an introvert. Yeah, me too. I'm like, <laughs> totally cool. <laughs> I can stay in my head and be alone all day and it doesn't worry me. But as you know, you know, this this business journey can be a lonely exercise. So I'm a member of a couple of business masterminds. Yeah, me too. Um, and that's really invaluable because, you know, you're with other women who get it. Yes. They're on the same journey um, and it's great for bouncing ideas, um, supporting each other and, you know, celebrating the wins and all that sort of thing. So I really value that. Um, and, of course, Facebook and Instagram. Um, it's how I'm we found each other. <laughs> yeah. I mean, a number of um, great Facebook groups, you know, where there's a lot of, um, interaction and support um, with other women um, and that's really helpful as well yeah mm. and I love I love how online is we think it's 
put us apart when in fact it's drawn us together and it's you know we wouldn't be able to do what we do uh no i wouldn't have a business no Uh, me either which is wild it is all this untapped brain power and intelligence and empathy and all this beautiful energy that goes around the world through 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 zoom conversations i love it so what's your why what keeps you motivated obviously your clients you said earlier yes um and also i guess the fact that that i design my life i design my business and the flexibility that offers me to be with my family i've got two grandchildren and that's really important to me so um yeah, when I get a bit frustrated, I think, no, you know, I could never go back to working for an employer again. I am unemployable at this point. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think I might be too. <laughs> and, you know, and the fact, you know, that I'm really making a difference and and I want to make a difference. Um, and, yeah, I guess the reward is far greater than, you know, what I would have received as an employee or mm. what I did receive. Yeah. And that's the emotional, financial, you know, yeah. from my, I mean, from my perspective, I make assumptions about you too, but yeah. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So yeah. what are your tips for all the smart women in business out there? Oh, my the goodness, world? I've got so many. I've got points here. <laughs> oh, she's taking notes. Look out. <laughs> I've I got, yeah, what are the most important things? Um, I think, first of all, so many people, they go through life and they've never actually sat down and thought about what they want, yes. what they value, what's important to them, what they want, and then how that translates into goals. And because most of our goals require money, yeah. <laughs> um, how that translates into financial goals. So I think it's really important to get clear about what they want personally, but also how they want their business to look. Mm. Like, do they want a multi-million dollar empire or do they just want a little business that, you know, supports them and, you know, where they only work, you know, a few hours a day, whatever it is, you know, design your business to suit the lifestyle that you want. That's one thing. Um, And... The other thing is to understand that our personal and our business finances are inextricably linked. You know, we go into business because we have a passion to help people, but we also want to make money. Mm. And and oftentimes for for single mums, it's, you know, they need to support their family. Yeah. Um, So understanding that, you then realise that if you're not good with managing your money personally, you're just going to compound the problem by starting a business. Yeah. Um, And, yeah, it's... So I guess that's why I take a holistic approach with money management. So that's why we deal with the personal finances and then the business finances. Because once you've got a handle on your personal finances, you actually know how much your business needs to pay you. Whereas a lot of people sort of say, oh, I just want to replace my income that I had as an employee. But if they weren't managing that money responsibly, they may actually find that they don't need as much money as they think. Mm. Um, from their business, you know, once they've got a handle on on their finances. So, and I'd say realise that they're interconnected but separate them. Mm. So, you know, have your personal and business finances. Open a business bank account at the very outset and keep all the business expenses and income um, from that account. That um, makes life a lot easier. It certainly does. <laughs> Save time and stress, especially around mm. tax time. Yeah. <laughs> and really, if you haven't got it separate, you can't really gauge whether or not your business is viable mm. even, you know. Mm. Um, and what else have I got? Oh, yes. 
please don't get dazzled by six and seven bigger <laughs> business claims <laughs> because Bloody gurus. I get on a rant with this um, because for a start, you that is top line revenue. So from that has to come expenses to run the business, mm. tax, GST, Super. all those things. Yes. And people don't realise that. And it's really important to realise that you don't bring home that six or seven figures, you know, yeah. and that for someone, say for someone earning $80,000 a year for an, with an employer, to pay themselves 80000 a year from their business, the business has to be bringing in a, probably close to 160000 mm. You can bank on it about half, um, you know. So, yeah, and the other thing is these six or seven figure business owners don't tell you how much of that they're actually keeping. So they might be in, you know, huge debt um, they might have expenses that are, you know, taking up almost all of that revenue. Mm. So it's a bit like being fooled by people who have, you know, the flash car and the great big home on the waterfront. On the and, Instagram, you know, then they've hired And we're all the envious day. of those people, <laughs> yeah. but we don't know what's going on behind the scenes. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, and so many entrepreneurs are so focused on chasing clients and money in an attempt to solve their problems because we all think you know more money is going to help mm -hmm. but in fact it doesn't um, it just compounds any bad habits that are there um, so you really have to look at, at changing your behavior around money and looking after the money that that you do have Mm -hmm. um, and you've already mentioned this, but people need to understand that cash flow is the lifeblood of business, not profit. <laughs> Profit's really important, um, but cash flow can make or break you. It um, really can. Yep. What else did I have here? Oh, the law of attraction and manifesting. Um, you know, I'm in a number of Facebook groups, as I, as I said, and there are a number of people who, you know, in discussions about manifesting, they're saying, oh, I need to manifest money for the car rego or, you know, I need to manifest money for the school fees or whatever it is. But manifesting won't work unless you've got a handle on your money and you're looking after your money. Exactly right. Um, because you'll constantly sabotage yourself. And I think we need an awareness around our money stories that we've inherited and those beliefs. We need to work on those. And we can, we can manifest, obviously, but you need to have a money management system as well. Yes. So it's all those um, spiritual and magical things that we can do, but you've got to have the practical as well to support it. Yeah. Yeah. And um, the other thing is that, yeah, busting those money myths that, you know, you need to be good with numbers. As I said, I'm not. Um, you need to have some special talents, you know, to be, to be wealthy. It's just not true. Um, and even people who are good with numbers, um, can struggle financially, personally. I mean, I've had clients on really good incomes, um, accountants, finance brokers, um, who, who struggled, you know, before working with me, you know, lawyers, you name it. Um, money issues are universal and it doesn't matter um, what standard of education you've had, you know, None of that is relevant. Anyone can learn how to successfully manage their money. Yeah. Oh, love it. So much wisdom, Marlene. Oh, so much. You. <laughs> so how can listeners find out more about you and your work, Marlene? Yeah, um, they can visit my website, which is 
insightspendingplanners.com. Uh, I'm on Facebook, Instagram. Um, I do have a number of free um, resources for people. So I think I've given you, I think, the link to yeah, my all the links link the tree. Comments. So yeah. on there they'll find um, a masterclass, which is a recorded video um, on how to have more money without increasing your income. And there's a couple of money quizzes. One is a self-assessment so they can see where they might need to do some work um, to get their finances under control. And the other one's a money personality quiz, which will help them identify, you know, money blocks that they have or behaviours that might be holding them back. Yeah. Brilliant. Thank you so much, Marlene. That was fantastic. Oh, you're very welcome. And thanks again for having me. It's been, it's been great.